Hello again. Uh, welcome back to the chemical process course. So we are going to again uh, go back to our quick review of what we discussed in our last class, right? So I believe uh, most of the time we spent looking at phase equilibrium, phase equilibrium, and the different phases. I guess what now? Liquid, gaseous, and solid phases. So we looked at some of the models that give us an idea between of partitioning of a compound between liquid and gas. I believe we looked at Henry's law and Rod's law. Henry's law in the dilute systems, Rod's law in non-dilute systems, right? And then we looked at liquid-liquid partitioning and a widely used variable is the octanol water partitioning coefficient. That is something that we looked at. And then uh, fluid and solid. Fluid is either a so liquid or a gas, right? Uh, we looked at various models for this partitioning. I believe we looked at linear Frondlich and Langmuir models, right? And then we also looked at one particular example of phase equilibrium. Example of phase equilibrium. So we have two phases, or had two phases. One is water and one is gas. So we had initially all the compound only in the water. And after equilibrium or phase equilibrium, after phase equilibrium, we wanted to calculate what is the concentration at equilibrium in both the phases, right? A particular compound was initially only in liquid phase and later on in both the gaseous and the aqueous or water phases, right? So we looked at two aspects there. We looked at material balance or mass balance. And then because it's a phase equilibrium, right? We looked at the relevant equilibrium equation, right? And what was that, I guess? That's going to be, we looked at the Henry's law, right? Which gave us the relationship between concentration in the gaseous phase to the concentration in the water. Concentration of the relevant compound in gaseous phase to the concentration of the relevant compound in water at equilibrium. So once we had these, we had two equations for two unknowns and we could go ahead and solve the system. And this was with respect to the phase equilibrium and the example two was relevant to phase equilibrium. And so then we moved on to chemical equilibrium, right? And we looked at a particular example of acetic acid and I believe I am using HAAC, uh, HAAC as uh, representing acetic acid. So it can dissociate into H plus and AC minus, right? Similar to, not similar, I guess. So how do we calculate the pH or the relevant concentration of the uh, deprotonated acid, uh, pardon me, deprotonated base and protonated acid, right? Protonated form. and deprotonated, I guess it's self-explanatory. Right? And we looked at a particular uh, simple model where we try to have a per new term called total acid would be equal to HAC and AC minus. And we know total acid was what we put in initially, HAC naught, and we could calculate that and move ahead with our solution now, right? But the issue was if we have any other compounds like calcium or any such uh, metals, let's say, that can complex with your estate, then this equation is going to be invalid or this particular total acid equation is going to be invalid and we weren't sure about how to go forward, right? So for that, we are looking at a generic approach and that's going to be a component balance. So this is something we will be discussing throughout the class, a component balance. So we are going to introduce a new concept here. So we are going to define components here and they are nothing but uh, chemical building blocks. So I will try to make it uh, easier to explain in the next slide, uh, but I need to give you some background. So for example, I guess uh, in this particular case, let us say if it is HAC, H plus and AC minus are the three species and again another term species. Uh, compounds present at equilibrium, present at 
equilibrium I guess. So, species are those compounds that are going to be present at equilibrium in your particular solution right. So, then I will need to choose or define something called components which I will call our chemical building blocks right building blocks why do I call them building blocks I mean people might have uh, certainly played with these at uh, home I guess when they were a child. So, you have building blocks you can use them to build different structures right you can dismantle them and again put them together to get different shapes right. So, again I think the concept is relatively similar and that is what I am trying to get towards to get you towards I guess we will come back to this. So, for example, here my system is that initially I am putting in acetic acid in my solution and I want to know the concentration of these three uh, species here and species what are they? They are the compounds that are present at equilibrium in your solution right. So, for this for generic approach which is applicable every time I need to be able to define components. So, before we go further let us look at the next slide that I have here. So, here let us say you know I have three compounds I guess call this compound 1, compound 2 and compound 3. So, I guess you know uh, to make you understand I am using the analogy with respect to building blocks let us say right. So, here you can replace these three compounds by HAC, AC minus and H plus or any other examples that you can think of let us say right. So, if you look at this particular system not system pardon me the compound it has how many building blocks I guess three, uh, three building blocks A, B and C right and compound 2 I guess that has 2 building blocks B and C and compound number 3 has again 3 building blocks I mean 3 different kinds of building blocks there are 4 building blocks here, but 3 different kinds of building blocks in C1 in C1, 2 different kinds of building blocks in C2 and 3 different kinds of building blocks in C3. So, what we are trying to look at is I am calling A right the building block A, A total how many is that equal to? that is equal to 1, 2 and 3. So, that is what I have here and what we are trying to look at here is that the total number of or total uh, component is going to be conserved. So, that is called the component balance. Right? And same case here now here again we have B total and that is equal to 4 how we look at that one building block here second third and fourth. So, the total uh, building blocks with respect to uh, B or B total is equal to 4 here I guess right and again same case with respect to C total here it is 1, 2 and 3 yes the C total again here this is what we have here. So, what we are trying to uh, get at is let us say I can use A and B I guess I am using the same colored pen so that I am going to get done faster. So, please excuse me. So, this can be a compound 4 or B and B can be a compound 5 right and then the A total can change depending on the system, but for one particular system the A total or B total and C total will always be constant and you know the rearrangement of these building blocks A and B within each particular compound can change them. So, again we are developing a concept of a component balance. So, I will try to make that clearer hopefully in the uh, uh, next slide I guess right. So, let us look at uh, one example here and uh, take you through uh, the relevant steps involved here. So, we will consider a relevant or a simple example here A plus B is going to form C or A and B are uh, what is reacting with each other and forming C. And so, this let us say is a reversible or you know this system can be at equilibrium. So, in general in this component balance approach this is a component balance approach which is applicable everywhere or in all the situations. Right? To calculate what do we use this word to calculate concentrations of compounds at equilibrium. Right? A minor change to my example is going to be that instead of C obviously to make you understand I am going to call that as A B right. So, compound A reacts with compound B to form a new compound called A B and this will be at equilibrium let us say or this can be at equilibrium. So, what do we need to first define I guess we need to define our components which are conservative quantities 
So obviously, I guess I'm calling this this first step, but we'll see why there is uh, it's, uh, there will be an issue here. To be able to define components, I first need to know what's going to be present in my solution, right? What does that mean? So at equilibrium, what are the different species present? So first, I need to be able to list the species, not the components. So first, I'll identify all the species present at equilibrium. So what does that mean? In this case, it's A, B and AB, right? The first step would be identifying the species. So once I identify the species, I'll then choose components, right? The minimum number of components to be able to form all my species. So when I say form though, it's not a chemical reaction. It can be any hypothetical equation too. So here, what do I need to, or what are the components in this case? I can choose A and B, right? Or I can choose A, B and B, or I can choose A, B and A. But in general, the most simplest form will be the simpler building blocks. So we can choose A and B as my building blocks, right? So all the three forms are component, uh, what do we say, forms are feasible. But in general, for calculations and getting the relevant constants later on, it's easier to choose the simpler building blocks, which in this case are going to be A and B, right? And then the next step would be writing the formation equations. And one aspect here that I need to clarify is that the components, right? The components, they can be hypothetical uh, blocks, you know, they do not need to be, uh, what do we say, something that you would see in, uh, uh, what do we say, nature or such. But in general, it makes, uh, they can be hypothetical, can be hypothetical, but species are what you would actually observe or expect to see at equilibrium in your solution, right? So formation, I guess, so uh, formation as in we are trying to form all the species A, B and AB. So how can I form them? This is not a chemical reaction, keep in mind. So I need one block of A to form one, uh, what do we say, compound A. I need one block of building uh, component B to be able to form one block of B and similarly I need one block of A and one block of B to be able to form the compound AB and the choice of the components in this case was components A and component B, right? We are not looking at these particular combinations, yes? So this is what we have, we have the formation equations, keep in mind that these are not, what do we say, chemical equations now, right? So again, let us moving on, uh, then we need to uh, I will just write this up here. So then we are going to have to list a tableau, tableau, right? So there we are going to have different components and the columns, the rows are going to be species. So components in this case were A and B. And the species in this case were A, B and AB. And then I am going to look at the relevant, uh, what do we say, contribution. So I need one uh, component of A to be able to form the species A, right? And 0 here and 1 here. And again B, I need 0 of B to form A. I need 1 of B to form B. And I need 1 of B to be able to form AB here, right? Again, let us look at that. These obviously are from your formation equations now, right? The first formation equation, how many A do I need to form A? Obviously, 1, that is what I have here. And how many A do I need to form B? 0. And how many A do I need to form B? I have 1. Same case with respect to B, right? And in the end, I guess we need to have the recipe species or the initial uh, species that were added. So, as you know, let us say, Okay, we will come back to this with respect to the state example, but for example, initially we added A, B naught, let us say, right, to your solution. You will say that is your recipe species, so that is going to be 1, 1 here, I guess, yes. And then the component balance equation, right, A total is equal to concentration of A, which is this here, 1 times concentration of A plus 0 times concentration of B plus 1 times concentration of A, B, right? That is what you see here. I am just balancing out this particular component. Similarly, I can balance out 
the component B and B total is going to be 0 times concentration of A plus 1 times concentration of B plus 1 times concentration of AB right. And as you can see here uh, what is the source of all A or all B here it is only coming from the initial compound AB0 that you are adding or AB0 initial concentration. And so this is a generic approach that can always be used and what are these equations here I guess these are the component balance equations right these are the component balance equations. So in general you obviously would not have enough uh, equations with just your component balance equations then you look at your equilibrium equations to solve the system. So this is a generic approach here right uh, so we are going to look at a more specific example now. So let us say I am initially adding H2SO4 uh, you know of a known concentration right and I want to know the uh, final pH of that particular solution. So first what do we do here uh, we need to uh, what do we say list the species again the example is that we are initially adding H2SO4 to my uh, system and I want to calculate the pH of this system let us say right how do I calculate the pH um, and this particular term obviously or nomenclature means that is the initial concentration that I am adding here. So what is our approach here species are to be listed and uh, we know the relevant equations from acid base which we will cover again later I guess H2SO4 is in equilibrium with H plus and HSO4 minus and HSO4 minus can further dissociate into H plus and SO4 2 minus right these are the two equilibrium equa or two equations that we are considering for now or uh, if when we have only H2SO4 these are the only equations that we need to consider other than obviously H plus or H2O dissociating into H plus and OH minus. So this particular uh, what you say nomenclature means it is a at equilibrium or it is a reversible uh, reaction right. So what are the species here species are those compounds that will be present at equilibrium right. So in this case what are they? So they are H2SO4 and they are HSO4 and HSO4 minus and SO4 2 minus and obviously H plus whenever we have H plus obviously OH minus and in general there is always water because these are all aqueous solutions. But you know we can uh, get by without listing water as your species because we assume that these are dilute systems and that the activity of water is more or less a constant right. So that is why we usually do not need to list the uh, H2O or water as a species. So now I need to choose my components and how do I do that I guess. So I want to choose these building blocks either hypothetical or real right so that I will be able to form form as in even mathematically I guess you can uh, form think of that form all my species right there are different combinations but the most easiest way would always be to choose H plus as one of your components right and then look at the most deprotonated form of your acid base system which would then be SO4 2 minus. So you can use any other uh, what do we say combinations but in general uh, thumb rule is that to use H plus and also to use the most deprotonated form of your uh, acid base system right. So these are my components and the next aspect is uh, writing the formation equations right formation equations and first I list all my uh, what is this now uh, species here because I am trying to form my species right and let us look at how I can form them. So obviously I need 2 blocks of H plus and 1 block of SO4 2 minus. So keep in mind that this need not be uh, similar to any chemical reaction that you see this as in these formation equations can be hypothetical I guess right and then we need 1 H plus and 1 SO4 2 minus 
to be able to form your HSO4 minus, I only need one SO4 2 minus to form uh, SO4 2 minus, I need one H plus to form H plus and then people are usually stuck with how do I get to OH minus, but if you keep in mind uh, H2O is always again a uh, component, so H2O or minus H plus will be equal to OH minus, right. So, with this as you see I was able to form all the 5 species that I wanted to H2SO4, HSO4 minus, SO4 2 minus, H plus and OH minus. So, here we are going to go to the tableau, right. Uh, once you are proficient, you can skip the formation equations and directly go to the tableau, right. And what are we going to have here? We are going to list the 2 uh, components and what are they? H plus and SO4 2 minus, and then list the species. They are H2SO4. HSO4 minus SO4 2 minus H plus and OH minus, right? And then we are going to have the recipe species which we are going to talk about later. So now I want to look at H plus and how many H plus do we have in H2SO4? And that is in this equation. We need two component two uh, components of H plus, and how many do we need uh, to form HSO4 minus? We need one and we need no H plus to form SO4 2 minus, 1 to form H plus and none to form or not 1 pardon me, it is going to be minus 1, so minus 1. So, they are all relevant to these formation equations here, right. So, same case here as with respect to SO4 2 minus, so how many SO4 2 minus do we require to form H2 SO4 here and that is from this initial formation equation. So, you need 1, again same case here 1, 1, 0, and 0 though, yes. And so, as we uh, talked about once we list the uh, species, we need to also look at the recipe species or whatever it is that you are adding initially and what is that here I guess you are adding H2SO4 initially, right. And again we need to write the relevant uh, component balance there. So, you need 2 components of H plus and 1 component of SO4 2 minus, right. So, I will continue the uh, work out here. And so, the total component balance for H plus or H total, so H total is equal to 2 times the concentration of H2SO4 plus 1 times the concentration of HSO4 minus plus 1 times the concentration of H plus minus or plus 1 into minus 1 times concentration of OH minus, right. And this is nothing but from the component balance equation here or uh, from the table and that obviously as we know is equal to 2 times and where is this all this coming from? From the initial solution that you added H2SO4 naught, right. And this is what we see here and same case with respect to SO4 total and that is the balance of this particular system or column here. SO4 total is equal to 1 times H2SO4 plus 1 times HSO4 minus, right, plus 1 times SO4 2 minus. And what is this all coming to, or what is the only source of SO4 2 minus in the solution? It is the H2SO4 we added initially, and so again 1 times H2SO4 not. So, usually what is your unknown he, uh, here I guess, uh, not unknown pardon me, the known H2SO4 or whatever it is that you are inputting initially, this is your known value, right. And here we are trying to calculate the pH, yes, what is the pH of the solution. So, if you can just solve this one equation I guess, right, H total will be done. Uh, so, let us see or let me move on to the next page and how to solve that. So, we had H total is equal to 2 times concentration of H2SO4 plus 1 times concentration of HSO4 minus uh, plus I believe H plus minus OH minus. All these are concentration and that we know is equal to a constant call of H2SO4 that we added initially the recipe species 2 times I guess. Let us see if we made any error here. 2 times 1, 1 minus 1 and 2, yes that is right here, right. So, here we are trying to solve this equation to be able to calculate H plus I guess, right. 
And so for this obviously again we have SO4 total uh, again, so we have that equation but that uh, just by 2 equations you cannot solve for how many unknowns, uh, how many unknowns do we have here? We have 5 species I guess 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So we have 5 unknowns right uh, which are what is the what are they now H plus OH minus SO4 2 minus HSO4 minus and H2SO4 right but we have only 2 equations from the component balance. So how many component balance will be equa equations will we have? The number of components we have I guess. So we have 2 component balance equations. So we are need 3 more equations independent equations. So where are we getting those 3 equations from? We know that the system is at equilibrium. So we, thus we can get the relevant equilibrium constants for the 3 reactions that were involved. What were the 3 reactions involved? H2SO4 can dissociate into H plus and HSO4 minus. HSO4 minus can dissociate into H plus and SO4 2 minus and water can dissociate into H plus and OH minus. So now we will have uh, what do we say? Uh, 3 equilibrium equations I will call this Ka1 we will explain what that is later and what is this equilibrium coefficient equal to activity of H plus into activity of HSO4 minus by activity of H2SO4 and Ka2 will be equal to activity of H plus activity of SO4 2 minus by activity of HSO4 minus. And the final water dissociation I guess is going to be activity of H plus by activity of OH minus and activity of H2O is equal to 1 here liquid and here I guess it is activity of H2O right and as you know activity of a liquid if it is a pure liquid is again mole fraction equal to 1 so we do not need to list the denominator here. So now how many equations do we have? We have 3 additional equations 1, 2 and 3 and we have uh, 2 component balance equations. So for the 5 unknowns we have 5 equations and we can solve them using uh, Excel or MATLAB right and then get the solution I guess right. So I guess with that uh, we will wrap up for today and look at a few more uh, what do we say examples probably in the next class before we move on to kinetics. Thank you.